I will begin. Oh. <laughs> there you go. So let me begin with a uh, with a word of prayer. Here we go. <clears throat> Hem. Dearly Father, we uh, thank you for this day. I thank you again for these students. I thank you that uh, while we were while we were still sinners, you died for us, and we thank you for that. Let's pray that you bless this class and just guide our steps, Lord. In your name, I pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. All right. So, um, first of all, any questions? I remind you guys, I won't be here Friday. You can come here and work on Friday if you like, together as a class if you want. Um, I'll be posting um, like a link to a video that you can watch in, in place of the class. Um, so that'll be like the tomorrow morning, Thursday um, video. The start of that video should be like the end of this class anyway, so you might be able to skip ahead a bit. Um, but anyway, so there's that. So let's talk about quadratic equations again. I just want to um, talk about a few things. So first of all, if you've got something that's say like, you know, 3x plus 2 quantity squared equals to minus 17, and you're asked to solve that, well, what's the right approach to take here? How about we just use the square root property, right? We can take the square root of both sides, what do we get? Let's see, I heard a 3x plus 2 equals i root 17. Um, I'm mostly on board with you guys, but plus or, yeah, oh, the plus or minus, that's what, music, music to my ears. So plus or minus the square root of minus 17 which you guys have rightly reminded me is plus or minus i root 17. So then that gives me 3x is minus 2 plus or minus i root 17, right? And then, yeah? Oh, wait. Um, oh, wait. Never mind. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, then x is minus 2 plus or minus i root 17 divided by 3. And there you go. That's the solution to this quadratic equation. Yep. Seventeen. Well, there's still seventeen there. I mean, so square root of minus seventeen, the way I think about it, is this is the square root of minus one times seventeen, right? And then it just so happens that the Algebra works out here like this, and then, and, and this is i, and this is square root of 17, so. So last class I mentioned, like, this is kind of like the, the main part of complex numbers we need to understand. This is, this is it right here, like how to do that, yeah. Um, example two, so there's one in your homework which is kind of funny. And, uh, I mean, it's, I don't know, it's, it's kind of silly, I guess you could say. Where was that? Oh, here it is. Here, you're, you're told to solve um, x minus 2 times x minus 10 equal to minus 16 via the quadratic formula. I say it's silly because the book is giving you pretty bad advice on how to solve this problem. All right, but let me, let me elaborate on this further, okay? So a problem like this, what did the quadratic formula say? Remember the quadratic formula? It says that ax squared plus bx plus c equals to zero has x equals to minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all divided by 2a as solutions, right? We, we derived this last class, right? 
Remember I did this frightening calculation at the start of class? Sorry about that. I mean, in retrospect, I should have done a couple of easy examples before I did that to you, right? Um, if last class didn't make a lot of sense to you, I would encourage you to think about, you could try watching the, the class that we had yesterday morning, like Tuesday morning. Um, like I took a slightly different path to presenting the material, it might make more sense to you. Um, and there I did a couple of easy examples first and then I derived the quadratic formula. But anyway, that's just a thought. If you're struggling in here, there are four sections of college algebra. If you want to see me say it a different way, if you fish around, you might find it. Sometimes I just repeat myself in the four sections, but I do try to mix it up a little bit. Okay, um, so what do we have to do? To use the quadratic formula, we have to put it into what's called standard form. What's standard form? This right here is standard form. So standard form means that you've got everything on one side set equal to zero. You've gathered all like terms, right? Okay, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Let's take the problem we're given and multiply it out. What do we got? We've got x squared minus uh, 10x minus 2x plus 20 equals minus 16, right? So what I did right there was I just foiled out and I multiplied it out here, right? I multiplied out the left-hand side, all right? Now what? Let's put it in standard form. What do we got? We've got x squared minus 12x plus 36 equal to zero. Right? Now let's use the quadratic formula. What's the quadratic formula say? x is equal to 12, right? Plus or minus the square root of 12 squared, well minus 12 squared technically, minus 4 times 1 times 36, right, all divided by 2. So what do you got? You've got 12 plus or minus the square root of 144 minus, what is 4 times 36? Hundred and forty four, right? So the the discriminant here, the thing that goes inside the radical in the quadratic formula, right? The discriminant is zero. So what do we get? We get twelve over two. So this formula is just giving us six plus or minus zero if you like. So the answer is six. Now is this the right way to do this problem? Yeah, I would argue no. Factoring is like so much easier here, right? You just take this and do what? This is x minus 6 quantity squared, isn't it? So therefore, x equals to 6 is the solution. Now that's, I'm not, I'm ignoring the instructions from your homework for a moment, right? So on the quiz, on the test, there will be different kinds of problems. Some of the problems I'm just going to say solve. And it's up to you. You can choose whatever method you want to solve it, right? But there's going to be other ones where I say complete the square with factoring to solve it. There's probably another one where I say complete the square with the square root property to solve it. And there may, might yet be another problem where I say solve using the quadratic formula, right? Which method should you use? It depends on the problem, right? Um, and of course, part of the problem is the instructions. So like if the instructions saddle you with a certain way of thinking, well then you're kind of stuck with it, right? Now here's one, 0.02x squared minus pi x plus 7 equals to 0. Solve this quadratic equation. So what do you guys think about this one? Oh, you got it. <laughs> okay, cool. I, I, uh, I definitely don't want to complete the square here. And factoring seems like a fool's errand. This is, this yells at me, use the quadratic formula, accept your fate, right? I'm going to use the quadratic formula. So identify a is equal to 0 0.02. b is minus pi, right, which is minus 3.14 approximately. c is 7. 
So I've got x is equal to 3.14 plus or minus the square root of 3.14 squared, right? The minus doesn't matter for the square. You can drop it, right? b squared minus b squared, same thing. Um, 3.14 squared minus 4 times 0 0.02 times 7 divided by 2 times 0 0.02. So what do we get? Give me a second here and I'll, I'll do it. So, yeah, we have 3.14 over 0 0.04 plus or minus the square root of whatever that is divided by 0 0.04. So what's 3.14 squared? Um, and this is approximate, right? Because I technically pi is not quite that, right? It's a little bit different, but I'm just approximating here. I think the thing inside the square root is, oh, it's positive, isn't it? Okay, well, good. I got 9.2. About 9.3, approximately. Yeah. And so what's the square root of that? Divided by 0.04, what do I get? I got 76.2 for this piece. And the other piece, I got 78.5. So there you go. Approximately, those are your solutions. Now, of course, we could, you know, we could finish the math here. Now, if you happen to have a, a Casio like I do, there's also an equation mode in this. So if you want, you can go, in mine, you can go like um, mode 5 is equation, and then I can pick number 3, which is the quadratic equation. And then I can just directly enter the coefficients a, b, and c into here. And if I do that, 0.02, b is minus pi, and c is 7. If I do that, it gives me, with my Casio, x equals to 154.819 approximately. And the second solution is 2.26071 approximately. So if you have, there are some scientific calculators which actually have a quadratic solver built into them. Whether or not yours does, it depends on what you have. Um, this is one of the reasons I recommend the Casio as opposed to the TI-30 because it has the quadratic equation solver in it, which is super helpful if you're in a physics course or something and you need to solve a quadratic equation with ugly numbers in it. You plug the coefficients into this, it gives you the answer, right? Now, you might be like, oh, well, then I can solve all problems in here, right? Because I don't really need to factor. I can just put the numbers into my calculator. Well, yes and no. I mean, it does help you to check your answer, but I do want you to show work in here, right? So, like, it's not just the answer. It's the showing of work that you get credit for, right? Because I get partial credit, which means I don't just grade on the answer. I grade on the process, right? Any questions? Yeah. No, you cannot use a graphing calculator. Yeah, T84 is a graphing calculator, so that, that's a no. Sorry about that, but yeah. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, need, you need a something that has a screen like, you know, something along these lines. Yeah, sure. Although you, this is, at this point, it's somewhat of a relic. I think this is about 10 years old. <laughs> but they, they do have something like the, the um, descendant of this, if you will. They sell in Walmart, I think. It's got like... It may be like 115EX or something. Um, I think they're about, well, it depends on whether you're in the back to school sale or not. You know, sometimes they're like 15, sometimes they're 20. I forget. Actually, what am I saying? I need to adjust for inflation. There's no telling what it is at the moment. But, uh, <laughs> All right, any, any more questions about quadratic equations? Let me, let me, let me work another example here. Suppose we have you know, um, x squared uh, plus, let's say, 3x um, uh, minus, oh, I don't know, 
Uh, 10. Oh, 10 is too easy. Um, 11. There. This definitely will not factor, right, directly. You can try. It doesn't. So suppose we want to solve this. I'm, I'm going to show you how to, we can solve this by completing square and square root property. OK? So I want to work this example for you. And then we're going to move on to applications of quadratics, OK? So here, um, what do, how do I complete the square on that? x plus what? Remember, I want to I want to get these two terms back again, so I do a three over two because of this three here. All right. Now that means I've just added nine quarters, so I have to subtract three halves squared, right? Which is nine quarters, so minus nine fourths, and then I've got minus eleven equal to zero. So 3 halves squared is 3 times 3 over 2 times 2, which is 9, nine quarters. So I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm trying to solve with the square root property, right? Which means I need to isolate the square. Isolate the square. Let's do it. We got ourselves a x plus 3 halves squared equals to 9 quarters plus 11, right? Now 9 quarters plus 11 is really 9 plus 44 over 4, isn't it? Because 11 is 44 fourths, right? Making a common denominator of, of 4. And so 9 plus 44 is uh, 53 over 4. Okay, and now I use the square root property. Square root property tells me x is equal to, excuse me, x plus 3 halves is equal to plus or minus the square root of 53 over 4, which by the way is plus or minus the square root of 53 over the square root of 4, which by the way is plus or minus the square root of 53 over 2. So what's the answer? I need to solve for x, right? Solve for x. We get x is minus 3 halves plus or minus the square root of 53 over 2. There you go. That's the solution here. Now, if this was a problem in your homework and your textbook had said, Solved by using the quadratic formula, I would say, oh, okay, that's not too bad of an advice because what we just did, right, it's about the same trouble as using the quadratic formula. You know, eh, give or take. What we just got down there is exactly what you'd get from the, qu the quadratic formula would look like what? Minus b, right? Plus or minus the square root of what? 3 squared. Um, minus 4 times 1 times minus 11 divided by 2, which is what? Minus 3 plus or minus the square root of 9 plus 44, which is 53, over 2, right? So the solution of this problem by the quadratic formula, it's really about the same, in my view, it's about the same difficulty. Now, you might say the quadratic formula is easier here. I couldn't argue with you. It might be easier for you, right? Any questions? No? All right. Let us look at some application problems here. Let's see here. I guess I'll put one over here. So 
So we've got a projectile, all right, and it's got initial velocity of 40 feet per second. And we're told that neglecting air resistance, we have that the um, height over the ground, S, is equal to minus 16 T squared plus 40 T, all right? So the key here is that this is the position above ground as function of time t in seconds. All right? Then the question is this. The question is, which equation should you write to determine the time at which the projectile hits 40 feet? What equation to solve to find t when projectile 40 feet above ground? That's the problem. And it gives you multiple choice in your homework, yeah? Anyway. Sorry, so much writing. <laughs> So my question to you is, what, what equation should we try to solve if we, were to, if we were to try to solve this? We would do what? If you want to find when it's 40 feet, what you do is you put S equal to 40, right? So you would have to solve 40 is equal to minus 16 T squared plus 40 T, right? That's the equation that we would need to solve to find the time, right? Now that, that's the answer to the, that, that's kind of like the answer to the problem in your homework, right? That's a, it's a multiple choice. You pick the right formula, all right? But we can do better here, right? Can you find the time? What would we do? We just need to solve, actually find the time. How do we do it? We just need to solve this equation. And um, I think what I would do is I put it in the standard form, right? 16t squared um, minus 40t plus, um, excuse me, minus 40. No, plus 40. I'll get it right eventually here. So I move everything um, to the left-hand side, all right? And then, um, yeah. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep that 40 right there. I'm moving everything over there. So plus 16 T squared and minus 4. I know, yeah. Got to watch out. Now, how about this? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and move it up here so everybody can see it. What's that? What, what was it? You guys getting lost on my minus in? I just, I moved these two terms to the other side, which made this turn into a minus 40t, and that made that turn into a plus 16t squared. All right. I think we could divide by, we could divide by 8. Yeah? Divide by 8. And we get 2t squared minus 5t plus what? 5 equals to zero. Um, just glancing at it, I'm not super optimistic this factors. Let's just use the quadratic formula, all right? So we'd use t is equal to five, because that's minus b, right? Plus or minus the square root of five squared is 25, minus four times a, which is two, times c, which is five, divided by 2 times 2, right? So the time when it gets to 40 is 5 over 5 plus or minus the square root of, what was that? 25 minus what? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> 25 minus what? Is that, you said 20. I wish it was 20. I'm seeing a 40 there. E. 4AC 
unless I, made, I don't think I made a mistake here. That's 25 minus 40 is what? <laughs> that's, that's minus 15, is it not? Ooh, yeah. What does that mean? Yeah, what does it mean if you find an imaginary time as your answer for a physical problem? It means there's no solution. There's no real time. It means that this projectile never gets to 40 feet. Hmm. Ha <laughs> ha. I mean, to be fair to the book, the book didn't say that the problem had an answer. It just said set up the equation which would tell you, the solution would tell you when it gets to 40 feet. It's just that the answer happens to be, it never does. Yeah. That's an S. That's an S? Okay. Listen, we could put a Y here, and that would make everything so much nicer, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, S is from your homework. Just how far it's, you know, it's so like the distance above the ground is Y. Now there is a difference between this class and um, like your physics class that you might take after this, which is. I don't expect you to set up the formula for the position as a function of time. In physics, that's part of your job, knowing how to set up the formula, right? And here, we just give you this formula and you work with it for this. Now, there are other problems I expect you to be able to set up the formula for. Let me look at one of those, okay? So the problems where I expect you to be able to set up the formula, it's something that's kind of more, um, that's not based on, you know, an understanding of Newtonian physics like this is, right? To, to set up that formula, you need to know physics, which you know, you may or may not know, and that's okay. I mean, what am I saying? That's not okay. Everybody should know physics. All right, so let, let's look at a slightly different problem. Find two consecutive integers whose product is 56. Let's see here, example. I heard 7 and 8 already. Very good. So... Let's work that out. You're like, I just guessed it. I don't need to work it out. Fair enough. All right, let's, let's work it out, though, see what happens. So find consecutive um, integers whose product is 56. Okay, so what's, what is the equation we have to solve here? Let's look at, these integers are what? Like, we could think about them as x, right? And what's the next one after x? What's the next integer right after x? x plus what? x, and what would the next one? The next one would be x plus, if I have 5, I want to get to the next number, what do I do? 5 plus... You guys are just going to leave me hanging. One, one, thank you. Put me out of my misery. So x times x plus 1 is equal to 56. You're like, I already know the answer is 7, 8. Why are we doing this? Okay, fine. I hear you. But there's something interesting that's going to happen. We're going to find another answer which you might not have already thought of because there are two answers. So this is x squared plus x minus 56 equal to 0, right? which we can factor, x, what, plus 8 times x minus 7, right? So what are the answers? The answers are x equals to minus 8 or x equals to 7. Now these are not the consecutive integers, right? This is the first one. The next one, x plus 1, is what? Minus 7. Here, x plus 1 equals to 8, right? So the answers, there are two answers, yeah? The two answers are minus 8 and minus 7, or 7 and 8. Now pretty much everybody always thinks of these, but a lot of you, did anybody think of this? I see one. Good, good, excellent.
Hey, let me let me ask a, a slightly different question. How about this? Um, do there exist consecutive integers whose product is 21? It's almost the same question, right? But instead of 56, I've got 21, right? So again, we would try to solve x times x plus 1 equals to 21. And what would happen? x squared plus x minus 21 equals to 0. What are the solutions to that? 3 and 7. Those are not consecutive, though. I mean, does 3 work for this? I don't think 3 solves this. 3 squared is 9. 9 plus 3 is 12. 12 minus 21, not 0. 3 does not solve that equation. I don't think 7 does either. What does? Well, you could use the quadratic formula. We could complete the square. Let me complete the square since you guys need more practice on that. Yeah. So we have x plus 1 half quantity squared minus 1 quarter minus 21 equal to 0, which gives me x plus 1 half quantity squared equals to 1 quarter plus 21, right? Um, 4 times 21 is um, 84. 84 plus 1 is 85. So you got 85 over 4 over here. Take the square root of both sides. We get x plus 1 half is plus or minus the square root of 85 over 4. In other words, x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 85 over 4. What does that mean? What's the answer to the question? Do there exist integers whose product is 21? There do not, right? The number whose, pr the number, um, the, the consecutive, if you have a number and then a number plus 1 whose product is 21, the numbers which do that are these. And you can calculate the decimal form of these and you'll find that they're not whole numbers, right? Like the square root of 85, does, it's not anything nice, yeah? So in other words, the answer is, do there exist? Um, nope, nope, there don't. So these questions that I just posed, they don't require you have any kind of like, you know, deep understanding of physics, right? You just need to know about numbers. Let me show you another one here. One more, one more application example, then we're going to go on. Um, where did my... Oh. So the next problem involves... Um, choosing dimensions for a carpet. So we're going to put a carpet in a room, all right? And the area of the carpet is fixed, like we're given the area of the carpet. We're also given the dimensions of the room, all right? And then the question is, what dimensions do you have to make the carpet in order to fit it? Let me be more explicit here. So the room, all right? I'm going to draw this purple box. All right, and we're told the dimensions of the room. If I can find my problem here. Just a second, I'll find it. And there's a few problems in your homework which are like this problem, but they're, they look different, but they're really this problem in disguise. Um, all right, so here we go. This is like problem 29 your homework. So you've got 27 in my problem for this one. You've got 21 feet for this one, all right? And you're putting a carpet in the middle like this, and the carpet has 187 feet squared. So the question is, what are the dimensions that you want the carpet to be, provided that you want the strip around the carpet 
to be uniform. So without carpet on the edge, you know, what are dimensions? So the carpet is in the middle, I'll shade it as much as I can. There you go. So a problem like this, you have to, first of all, you have to make a picture, all right? Now your book, uh, your homework does give you a picture for it, but sometimes you just have words, right? So the first thing you have to do is make a picture. And then you have to ask yourself, what do I need to figure out, right? Like, can I make a label for something I need to figure out? What, what's really the question here? Um, to me, the thing that pops out at me here is, I don't really want to ask what the dimensions are. That, I mean, I can, I'll, we'll figure that out, but what's an easier thing to think about is, if I could just figure out what the, what the thickness of the strip is, if I could figure that out, I could figure out the dimensions, right? So let's call the, the, the width of the strip, let's call that x. Let's call this distance here x, okay? Then this distance over here is also x, right? So if that's the case, can you tell me the length and the width of the carpet in terms of x? Like what's this length here? So if you look up here, it's easier to see, right? You've got x here. You've got x over here, right? I, I heard a 27 minus something. 27 minus what? Two minus 2x. There you go. That has to be that distance there, right? Because if you take that distance and you add x and then add another x, you've got to get back to 27. And if you get this, you probably will also understand that the distance over here is what? 21 minus 2x, right? So the area of the carpet is length times width, which in this case is, let's say, 27 minus 2x times 21 minus 2x, right? And that's equal to 187. Can we solve this? I think we can. Let's work it out here. So 27 times 21, oh, it's a big number. 561, I think. I want to double check me on that one. Um, minus 54x, minus 42x, plus 4x squared equals 187. Anybody check me on the 561? Yeah. 567? Thank you. I knew something felt off. Thank you. So we got 4x squared. 54 plus 42 is 96, right? So minus 96x um, plus 560 minus 167 minus 187 is 380 equal to zero. Now, you can just plug that into the quadratic formula if you want, but I'm going to divide by four because everything's divisible by four here, might as well. I've got x squared minus 24x. What's 380 divided by four? I think, 90, is it 95? That sounds right. 95. Can you factor that? You might be able to, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to complete the square. 
That's x minus 12 quantity squared minus 144 plus 95 equal to 0, which gives me x minus 12 squared equals to 144 minus 95, which is 49, I think. So x minus 12 is plus or minus the square root of 49, which is plus or minus 7. So x is equal to 12 plus or minus 7, which gives me x equals to 19, or x equals to 5. All right. So what gives here? We got two answers. Are, which one of these is which one of these is reasonable? It was easy enough to figure out there were no reasonable answers in example five when I got to the end of it, right? And it was easy enough to see there were no reasonable answers in examples seven when I got to the end of it, right? And it was also easy enough to see that both answers were reasonable in the example six, right? How about this one? Think about this. Can you cut off a 19 foot strip from both sides of the carpet, I mean both sides of the room? Like, can you have 19 feet here and also 19 feet here? I mean, you can't, right? You can't, that's, that's physically unreasonable. This, this, this solution right here is what's called extraneous. That one is not a physically legitimate solution given the problem. So this right here is the one we want. Now, is that the answer? What was the question? The question was, what are the dimensions of the carpet, right? So you got to take that. The dimensions of the carpet are what I call L and W. And I never quite wrote down the formula. I mean, I'm, L, I'm thinking of L as 27 minus 2x. And I'm thinking of the W as 21 minus 2x. I never wrote that up until now, though. I mean, I, I did it here. But I mean, to be fussy, I really should like label this L, W, you know? There. And what are those? So if I plug in 5, I get 27 minus 10, which is 17. And I get 21 minus 10, which is 11. So the dimensions you want are 11 feet by 17 foot. That's the carpet you want if you want a nice uniform, uniform strip in that room with those dimensions, given that your budget is fixed at, you know, 187 square feet. Yep. Um, here, you can solve it any which way you like. Once you get to this quadratic formula, you don't have to even divide by 4. You can throw these numbers into the quadratic formula and calculate with abandon if you like. Um, it's all up to you. If you could see how to factor, like you probably, so I think somebody factored this in the last class. Like we didn't, like in the last time I had this problem, somebody just like stone cold factored this. Because it can be factored into x minus 5 times x minus 19, right? This does factor to x minus 5 times x minus 19. So if you saw that, more power to you, you know? Like this is faster for sure, right? But did anybody see that here? Does anybody have the number sense to see that? I mean, you might if you practice the technique I told you about, the Sprano notation, looking at the factors and such. but. I mean, there's that path, but I would argue that completing the square is actually pretty fast. Quadratic formula is not a bad choice here either. I mean, because the numbers are kind of big. But I don't know. It's up to you guys. So, you know, unless you're instructed otherwise, you're free to do lots of things. Now, <clears throat> my original plan for this course, I guess, um, I'm still stuck with because I could not get to the, I mean, we have three minutes left, right? So I can start talking to you about the, the final problem. Let me, let me just set the stage for you. The kind of problems we're going to look at next are um, problems like, let me just throw a couple of them up on the board. Um, the next order of business are solving things like x over x plus 2 equals to 3x 
over x minus 7, something like that. Or we might want to solve something like the square root of x plus 1 plus x equals the square root of x minus 5. Or we might want to solve something like 3x minus 7 to the 1 3rd power equals to, I don't know, 2. Problems like this and more are covered in the next segment of your lecture, okay? So like tomorrow morning, I'm going to tape a lecture on how to solve problems like this. That's the end of your homework. This is on section 1.6. It's, um, you know, radical equations and, yeah. Well, um, You're all, it's all good? Yeah, um, why does the 19 go into the length time flip formula? Why doesn't the what? The 19, so like you have x equals 19 x equals 5 at the end of the day. So, well, can't X be 19? Oh, just think about it. Go back here. Look yeah, at this. That wouldn't make sense. Yeah, but I was just making sure. That was um, like, why is 19 not possible? It goes back to the picture. Like, looking at the picture, we can't have 19. Because if we have two X's, right? X plus X is... There's at least two X distance here, and X plus X would be uh, 38 if X is 19. But there's only 21 here, so it's, it's physically unreasonable. A deeper reason for why that 19 is there and what that means, I don't know right offhand, but that's, a, that's an interesting question. Is it possible to have a problem like this where you have two reasonable answers? Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure. Maybe. You have to check. Hey, thanks, guys.